Question. The nurse is administering 8 a.m. medications to the following clients. Which patient should the nurse question administering the medication? A. The patient receiving a calcium channel blocker who drank a glass of grapefruit juice. B. The patient receiving a beta blocker who has an apical pulse of 63 beats per minute. C. The patient receiving nitroglycerin patch who has a blood pressure of 147 over 92. D. The patient receiving an antiplatelet medication who has a platelet count of 150,000. Answer. Choice is correct. Grapefruit juice should be avoided when the patient receives calcium channel blocker because it can cause toxic levels. Choice B is incorrect. The apical heart rate should be greater than 60 BPM before a beta blocker is administered. Because the apical pulse is 63 BPM, the nurse should administer this medication. Choice C is incorrect. The nitroglycerin patch should be held if the client's blood pressure is less than 90 over 60. Because it is above that, the nurse should not question administering this medication. Choice 4 is incorrect. The patient's platelet count is not monitored when administering medication. Additional info, grapefruit juice can inhibit the metabolism of certain medications. Specifically, grapefruit juice inhibits cytochrome P450-3A4 found in the liver and the intestinal wall. The nurse should investigate any medications the patient is taking if the patient drinks grapefruit juice. Question. The patient calls the emergency department and says, I am having chest pain. I believe I have another heart attack. Which priority intervention should the nurse implement? A. Call 911 Emergency Medical Services. B. Advise the patient to take an aspirin. C. Determine if the patient is at home alone. D. Ask if the client has any sublingual nitroglycerin. Answer. Choice D is correct. Because the patient has had one MI, the patient may have sublingual nitroglycerin, a coronary vasodilator, in a pocket and can take it immediately. If the patient does not have any on the body, then the nurse should determine if there is anyone in the home that can help the client. Choice is incorrect. This should be done, but the nurse should not hang up the phone until taking other interventions. Choice B is incorrect. The patient should take an aspirin because aspirin has been shown to be effective in decreasing the mortality rate of death from MI, but the patient should not walk to get the aspirin. Choice C is incorrect. This should be the second intervention. The nurse needs to assess the situation to determine if the patient has anyone who can get the aspirin and let the EMS personnel in when they arrive at the home. Question. The nurse completes morning care with a patient diagnosed with angina when the patient reports chest pain. The patient has a saline lock in the right forearm. Which action should the nurse implement first? A. Assess the patient's vital signs. B. Administer sublingual nitroglycerin. C. Administer IV morphine sulfate via saline lock. D. Administer oxygen via nasal cannula. Answer. Choice D is correct. The nurse would have oxygen at the bedside, and applying it would be the first intervention the nurse could implement at the bedside. Choice is incorrect. The patient is having chest pain with activity, therefore, the nurse should treat the patient. Choice B is incorrect. Administering sublingual nitroglycerin, a coronary vasodilator, would be appropriate, but unless the nurse has the nitroglycerin in the room, the nurse should not leave the patient alone. Choice C is incorrect. Administering morphine sulfate, a narcotic analgesic, would be appropriate, but the nurse at the bedside would not have morphine sulfate at the bedside and it would take time to prepare. Additional info, when answering test questions or when caring for patients at the bedside, the nurse should remember assessing the patient may not be the correct intervention to take when the patient is in distress. The nurse should directly intervene with the patient first. Question. The nurse is doing health teaching to a patient diagnosed with angina and taking sublingual nitroglycerin. Which remark by the patient indicates needs further education? A. I will always carry my nitroglycerin in a dark colored bottle. B. If I have chest pain, I will put a tablet underneath my tongue. C. I should expect to get a headache after taking my nitroglycerin. D. I will call for medical help if one tablet does not relieve my pain. Answer. Choice D is correct. 
The patient should put one tablet under the tongue every five minutes and, if the chest pain is not relieved after taking three tablets, the patient should seek medical attention. This statement indicates the patient needs more teaching about the medication. Choice is incorrect. If the nitroglycerin, a coronary vasodilator, is not kept in a dark colored bottle, it will lose its potency. This statement shows the patient's understanding of the medication teaching and that more teaching on that topic is not necessary. Choice bis incorrect. Sublingual nitroglycerin is placed under the patient's tongue when chest pain first occurs. The patient understands the teaching. Choice C is incorrect. Nitroglycerin causes vasodilation and will cause a headache. The patient understands this. Question. The patient reports severe chest pain radiating down the left arm and is nauseated and diaphoretic. The HCP suspects the patient has an MI and ordered morphine sulfate for the pain. Which interventions should the nurse implement? Select all that apply. A. Instruct the patient not to get out of the bed without notifying the nurse. B. Administer the morphine sulfate intramuscularly in the ventral gluteal muscle. C. Dilute the morphine sulfate to a 10 ml bolus with normal saline. D. Administer the morphine sulfate slowly over 5 minutes. E. Question the order because morphine sulfate should not be administered to a patient with myocardial infarction. Answer. Letter A, C and D. Choice is correct. The patient should not get out of the bed without assistance due to the drowsiness the patient will experience after receiving morphine sulfate, a narcotic analgesic. Also, the patient is having chest pain and should not get out of the bed without assistance. Choice C is correct. Morphine sulfate, a narcotic analgesic, is the drug of choice for chest pain, and it is administered intravenously so that it acts as soon as possible within 10 to 15 minutes. IP medications should be diluted to help lowering the pain when it is administered and to prevent irritation to the vein. Choice D is correct. An IP also allows the nurse to inject the medication more accurately over the 5 minute administration time. Choice B is incorrect. Morphine sulfate, a narcotic analgesic, should not be administered intramuscularly to a patient with a suspected myocardial infarction because it will take longer for the medication to take effect and it can skew the cardiac enzyme results. Choice E is incorrect. Morphine sulfate, a narcotic analgesic, should not be questioned. It is the medication of choice and the nurse should know it is always administered intravenously for a patient with myocardial infarction. Question. The nurse is preparing a nitroglycerin patch for a patient, diagnosed with myocardial infarction. Which intervention should the nurse implement? A question applying the patch if the patient's blood pressure is less than 110 70 seconds. B use non-sterile gloves when applying the transdermal patch. C date and time the transdermal patch prior to applying to patient's skin. D place the transdermal patch on the site where the old patch was removed. Answer. Choice C is correct. The nurse should remove the old patch, wash the patient's skin, note the date and time, the new patch is applied, and apply it in a new area that is not hairy. Choice is incorrect. Nitroglycerin, a coronary vasodilator, causes hypotension and the nurse should question administering a transdermal patch if the patient's blood pressure is less than 90 sixtieths, but not if it is less than 110 70 seconds. Choice B is incorrect. The nurse should use gloves when applying nitroglycerin, a coronary vasodilator, paste, not a transdermal patch. The patch will not cause any medication to be absorbed through the nurse's skin. Choice D is incorrect. The transdermal patch must be rotated so that skin irritation will not occur. Question. The patient diagnosed with myocardial infarction is receiving thrombolytic therapy. Which data affirms immediate intervention by the nurse? A. The patient's telemetry has reperfusion dysrhythmias. B. The patient is oozing blood from the IV site. C. The patient is alert and oriented to place, time, and date. D. The patient has no signs of infiltration at the insertion site. Answer. Choice B is correct. Any bleeding from the IV site, gums, rectum, or vagina should be reported to the HCP. The HCP may not be able to take intervention to prevent the bleeding during therapy but it warrants notifying the HCP. Choice is incorrect. 
Reperfusion dysrhythmias indicate that thrombolytic therapy is effective. It indicates that the cardiac tissue is being perfused. Choice C is incorrect. Being alert and oriented would not warrant intervention by the nurse. However, the nurse should monitor the patient's level of consciousness because cerebral hemorrhage is a major concern when a patient is being given thrombolytic therapy. Choice D is incorrect. The nurse should check the IV site for signs of infiltration, which could lead to tissue damage. If there are no signs of infiltration, intervention by the nurse is not warranted. Question. The patient diagnosed with angina prescribed nitroglycerin tells the nurse, I don't understand why I can't take my sildenafil. I need to take it to make love to my wife. Which information is the nurse's best response? A. If you take the medications together, they may cause you to have very low blood pressure. B. You are worried your wife will be concerned if you cannot make love. C. If you wait at least 8 hours after taking your nitroglycerin, you can take your sildenafil. D. Make a clarification with your HCP about taking sildenafil. Answer. Choice A is correct. Life-threatening hypotension can result with concurrent use of nitroglycerin and sildenafil, Viagra, a peripheral vasodilator erectile agent. Option B is incorrect. This is a therapeutic response, which is not appropriate, because the nurse must make sure the patient understands the importance of not taking the medications together. Option C is incorrect. The patient should not take sildenafil, Viagra within 24 hours of taking nitrates, but the patient should be instructed not to take sildenafil, Viagra at all while taking nitrobut, a core of vasodilator, which is an oral medication taken daily. Option D is incorrect. The nurse should provide the patient with correct information about medication and should not rely on the HCP for medication teaching. Question. When administering a nitroglycerin paste, 0.5 inch to a patient with chest pain, how much paste should the nurse apply to the application paper? A.5 B1 C1.5 D2 Answer. Choice A is correct. The line is in increments of 0.5 inch, and the order is 0.5 inch, therefore, the nurse should apply this much paste. Choice B is incorrect. This would be 1 inch which is twice the prescribed dose of medication. Choice C is incorrect. This would be 1.5 inches, which is not the correct dose. Choice D is incorrect. This would be 2 inches, which is not the correct dose. Question. The nurse is doing discharge teaching of lisinopril to a patient who sustained an acute myocardial infarction. Which instruction should the nurse include when teaching about this medication? A. Advise the patient to monitor his blood pressure weekly. B. Encourage the client to take medication on an empty stomach. C. Discuss the need to rise slowly from lying to a standing position. D. Teach the patient to take the medication at night only. Answer. Choice C is correct. This medication causes orthostatic hypotension and the patient should be instructed to rise slowly from lying to sitting to standing position to prevent falls and injury. Choice A is incorrect. The patient is taking lisinopril, Zestrel, and ACE inhibitor to improve survival following an acute MI and the blood pressure should be monitored daily, not weekly. Choice B is incorrect. The patient can take the medication with food to help decrease gastric irritation. Choice D is incorrect. There is no reason for the medication to be taken during night. It is usually taken in the morning. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and watch playlist for more videos.